Hey there, Jack McLean here, and welcome to this week's Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. This week I'll be discussing how I use the Jim Wendler 531 famous program, but for footballers, so the adjustments I've made specifically for footballers and why. And later on, I'll also be discussing a power tip on how to make the most of your ice bath. I recently um, read a research paper which was titled Impact of Cold Water Immersion Compared with Passive Recovery Following a Single Bout of Strenuous Exercise on Athletic Performance in Physically Active Participants. This was a systematic review with meta-analysis and meta-regression, and it's something that there's been a lot of conjecture around whether ice baths are effective or not, where this paper proves in an objective way as well as subjective, so getting the athlete's point of view, but also some objective markers on athletic performance uh, and how effective ice baths can be. So um, we'll go into the specifics a little bit later on, but ultimately some good takeaways on how long you should be spending in the ice bath as well as how cold the ice bath should be for minimum effective dose. Because as we know, winter sport, you don't want to be there in the ice bath for long durations. However, you do want to make sure that the time you're putting in there, you're getting bang for buck in terms of recovery. So we'll go into detail around that paper and some practical takeaways a little bit later on. Um, we'll also discuss the importance of uh, your Jim Wendler program, so how to get stronger and improve your power. So that would be specifically footballers in the off-season, pre-season phase, uh, who can have the time and energy, not recovering from a game, to lift four times a, a week as a minimum to get these benefits. So if you're new to the podcast, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and let's get into today's episode. This week's key topic is all about cold water immersion. So the key finding from this study from Emma Moore, Joel T. Fuller, and Crit Bellinger, thank you for the research firstly, was around cold water immersion and how it can affect the recovery of uh, athletes. So they compared um, cold water immersion to those just doing passive recovery and they found it had a positive influence on muscular power um, but not muscular strength import in performance. So for all those that want to improve your power, um, cold water immersion seems to be effective and this research is, is suggesting that. Cold water immersion is also more likely to positively influence muscular power performance, muscle soreness and serum creatine kinase release. So the perceived recovery of the athlete, so the, the subject of how they feel um, if particularly after high intensity exercise when compared to passive recovery. Once they leave the ice bath, they feel more recovered from muscle soreness point of view. And um, from an objective measure, they were able to produce more power the next day, as well as they've had a higher release of creatine kinase, so the waste products um, built up from high intensity exercise. So for the footballers listening, cold water immersion will improve your uh, ability to produce force rapidly the next day as well as release the waste product so if you feel like you've got heavy legs you've got muscle soreness the next day then you could benefit from ice baths the dose response relationships indicate that lower temperature of cold water immersion may be more effective after high intensity exercise for remo removal of serum creatine kinase so we want to make sure that the temperature uh, is below 10 degrees and this research suggests that um, temperatures down to as low as six degrees was most effective for that effect of um, after high intensity exercise which would be any sport and any um, like field sports so soccer rugby football um, not only in, in um, releasing your creatine kinase but also uh, improving your power performance the relationships indicate shorter duration, which is really interesting in cold water immersion, may be more effective after high intensity exercise compared to longer durations. So anywhere from down to three to five minutes were uh, effective in cold water immersion. And there wasn't strong research on spending longer than that. So that's a good one for the athletes listening in, as well as the strength and conditioning coaches that might be facilitating these recovery sessions. Uh, not necessarily more is better, but making sure we're getting the temperature right down. and um, yeah, you, you're effective in the time that you're spending in there, which is which is really good to know, and means that you don't need to be sending um, you know rounds and rounds of five minutes in the ice bath. So they're the main takeaway, practical takeaways for me: short durations, 
and keep that temperature right down in the ice bath. So worth um, having a measure gauge and, and seeing how cold the ice bath is if you have that ability. And if it's 10 degrees, maybe you'll get them to um, try and add in a little bit more ice baths to try and get uh, some more ice to get that temperature down so you'll have a more of an effective release. There are many great training programs out there to get stronger. However, one of the simplest and most effective strength programs is the Jim Wendler 531 program. It, he is a world-class powerlifter and strength coach, coach for those that don't know Jim. He's trained for many years of world-famous Westside Barbell Powerlifting Club under the legend Louis Simmons, who, rest in peace, has recently passed away. And his program is basically bench press on your Monday, squat on your Wednesday, bench, and then we've I've added in the bench pull on the Friday and then trap bar deadlift. So he had a vertical press in the overhead press. I've changed that for footballers to a bench pull. It's a four-week periodized program. You simply start with three sets of five for week one. Week two, you start with three sets of three. Week three, you start with a five, three, one. And then week four, you're doing three sets of five as a deload week. All these reps and sets are based on training prescriptions. So you could you'd start with set one for week one is 65% for five reps, then 75% for set two. And then your last set is a max effort, an AMRAP, as many reps as possible at 85%, aiming for five plus. Week two, 70% at three reps. Week, uh, set two's 80% for three reps. And then your max AMRAP is 90% for three reps plus. It's all about intensity to get that uh, progressive overload and to develop your strength. Andy, how you going, mate? Week three, 75% of five reps. Uh, set two is 85% for three. And then your AMRAP is 95% for aiming for one plus. And then your deload week, working more on, on speed and power. So 40% for five, 50% for five, 60% for five to freshen up. The three heavy weeks uh, with a one easy deload week, for the first three weeks, you have an option for going at a rep PR on your last working set. So that's really, really important to push yourself. If you're feeling good that day, then you might hit a PB at that rep range. So you might hit your five rep max, for example. Uh, and it's really important that you have plenty of rest between your sets, anywhere between two to three minutes. Jordy Love, how you going, mate? Uh, I'm just discussing the Jim Wendler program. So that, that would be the key from it. It's not a high volume program in terms of working sets, but the key is that you warm up really well, you rest, because rest periods allow intensity, so you're resting adequately between your sets so that you can rip in and give your best effort on particularly that last set that's an AMRAP. A couple of really important tips and uh, areas that Jim discusses in terms of um, trying to break your PRs. The 531 training program is all about slowly breaking your rep PRs on the big four exercises over a long period of time. So the training max actually starts at 90% of your one rep max. So if you're benching 100 kilos and this is your first four week program, you would go to, you're working off 90 kilos of your one rep max, not 100 kilos. So same with your squat. If you squat 100 kilos, work off 90 kilos for those percentages. So if, so that's a really important area to uh, understand that you're not going off 100% and therefore um, you can build and do this program for uh, three months. And what he does is he adds five pounds to his upper body lifts. So for, for the Aussies, you want to try and add two, around two to two and a half kilos to your upper body lifts each month that you follow the program. And then he adds 10 pounds for the lower body lifts. So we can add five kilos to your lower body lifts and that will help you continually get progressive overload. Um, but also you can, as you get more conditioned to this type of program, you should be, be able to better yourself each time because you're lifting at a slightly higher percentage. Uh, and then you can see if you can match your reps at that, at that higher percentage than the last time you did it four weeks prior. So the key to these exercises from a footballer point of view is to adjust the exercises, the accessories that I would recommend um, to add in to the Jim Wendler program to build a bit of hypertrophy, really important in the off season for a lot of footballers to gain that um, body armor. So for the pool day on Monday, I would recommend doing some weighted chin-ups, three to four sets of six to 12 reps. Your triceps do close grip push-ups, three to four sets of six to 12 reps. And for your delts, lateral raises, three to four sets of six to 12 reps.
Shouldn't take too long, around 20 minutes right there. Wednesday, working on some distal hamstrings, so your hamstring towards your knee, single leg Swiss ball curls, three to four sets of six to 12 reps. Your adductors, so your groins, Copenhagen's, three to four sets of six to 12 reps. Your abdominals, hanging leg raises, three to four sets of six to 12 reps. For our bench day, we're working on rear delts, so reverse flies, seated rows for some rhomboids, and then for our bleaks and kneeling crossover chop, all the same volume, three to four sets, six to 12 reps. And then for the Saturday, our deadlift day, proximal hamstring, so an RDL, remaining in deadlift with the barbell, your, uh, to work on your single leg calf strength and to get a little bit more posterior chain development, some single arm rows, and that volume all stays the same, three to four sets, six to 12 reps. I've added all this program into our team builder. So if you want to jump on the program whenever you're listening to this podcast, email me at jacketpropellacapro.com or sign up to our free trial, which you can do via our website. The link is in the show notes or in the comment section of this YouTube episode. And by joining our program for free, you just let me know either through socials or replying when I send you the easy join code for Team Builder, just reply and say you want to follow the Jim Wendler strength program, the 531. I'll move you from my um, football program to the Jim Wendler one. Uh, and, and that's just set up through the back end on the calendar. But you just need to let me know because the two-week program is an automatic football program uh, and it's a generic program to trial out our online program it's not the Jim Wendler one so if you do want to follow this Jim Wendler one or maybe you're a coach and you want to try it out and I've laid all the percentages out for you and, and progressively overloaded the four weeks uh, and team builder is great because it'll have your maxes so it lays all those percentages out for you and acts like a really good training diary where you can see what you lifted the week before uh, and if you if you follow it thanks mate if you follow it for a couple of months you can see your history in those key lifts as well um, so you can try and better yourself and compete with yourself. That's it for this week's episode, guys. Really excited to announce our Prepare Like a Pro Academy. The wait list is live. The new website is live. So if you're a strength and conditioning coach out there and you want to top up your game and learn some practical tips from myself on coaching in elite sport but also developing your own online business, um, you can join the wait list where you're going to get a free month trial. Uh, so everyone that's on our program and all the coaches that have worked for Prepare Like a Pro, whether you're an intern or a coach, will get this academy for free as a value add by being either a staff member or by being on our online program or individualized program. But we want to try and help more footballers and more coaches out in the community. So what we've done now is we've created a new website, which is called the Prepare Like a Pro Academy, and it's going to be $20 a month once it's live. But for the first month, to uh, get it out there and help as many people as we can and also get some feedback to make it uh, even better. We're going to have the first month, which we go live in July, for free for everyone. So if you're interested in checking out all our presentations, uh, everyone will have their own private login so they can see what they've viewed in the past. There's a search engine in there as well. So any topics that you're interested in learning, the coaches platform will have different content specific to coaches for football and the athletes, so for the footballers, they'll have content that's specific to athlete development. So if you're interested and you want to get that free trial, all you need to do is enter in your name and your email on our wait list, and I'll be sending some updates and some little uh, information over the next uh, 60 to 90 days as we get closer to the release date. I'll see you guys on the next episode.